This lesson deals with a node voltage analysis example. You can find these notes in the ECE202 ebook in chapter 8 starting on page 47. Consider the following example where I've got some resistances, an inductance, a capacitance, an independent current source, and a dependent current controlled voltage source. Can you find the voltage V1 of T in steady state? We'll again use our three-step algorithm, but for the analysis part of it, let's go back to ECE201 in chapter 3, section 3.1. In that section, we developed an inspection algorithm where we could write node equations by just looking at our circuit and filling in matrices. To do that, we need to have all current sources and previously resistances, which will now have impedances. And the circuit has almost all of that. We just have a voltage source here, but we can convert that into a current source using a source transformation. So let's do that. The current source will be 10.6 at angle zero. The resistors will come through as resistors in the frequency domain. The inductance will have an impedance of j omega l, so it'll be j 200 times 10 times 10 to the minus 3. And then the capacitance will have an impedance of minus j divided by omega times c. Omega is 200 and c is 1,000 microfarads. Do a source transformation here, have a current source pointing towards the top with 20 i sub x divided by 5, and then a 5 ohm resistor in parallel. And this is shown at the bottom of the page here. So you could write this current source as 10.6 at angle 0. We're going to be adding things in the matrices, so let's convert this to rectangular form. This would be 10.6 plus J0 amps. And here's our impedance of our inductance, and then here's the impedance of our capacitance, and here's that source transformation. Now this problem, we've got one, two, three, four nodes, one of which is ground. But we could, with an impedance, combine things that have real and imaginary parts. When we do that, we get rid of one of the nodes. So we really only have two node equations here to write. On the following page is a summary of the algorithm that we did in ECE 201, but replacing the word resistance by impedance, conductance by admittance. If you have the ECE 201 ebook, this was in chapter 3 from pages 4 to 11, and this particular algorithm was between pages 9 and 10. Let me just state the algorithm. Our equations are the form of I is equal to now Y times V instead of G times V, because now we have an admittance matrix instead of a conductance matrix. The entries that are going to appear here in this column vector is going to be the sum of the current sources flowing into the ith node. In row 1, column 1, we'd have the current sources entering node 1, and so on all the way through to our last node. The diagonal components of this y matrix we'll call y sub ii. They're going to be the sum of the admittances now connected to the ith node. So in row 1, column 1, we'll add up all the admittances connected to node 1. In row 2, column 2, all of the admittances hooked up to node 2, and so on. Now the off-diagonal components will also be sums of admittances, and these will be what are between nodes, say, i and j. So if we look at row 1, column 2, we'll add up the admittances between nodes 1 and 2, and then we're going to negate the sum. I'm just going to repeat that algorithm as we fill into two matrices. For our circuit on the previous page, let's just do that. So I have two nodes. I have a 2 by 2 matrix. Again, this would be blank. Two rows and two columns, and then here are two rows and one column. I'm going to fill in the entries now for the current sources entering node 1, some of the admittances at node 1, the sum of the admittances between nodes 1 and 2. I'll do this while I'm pointing to the schematic on the previous page. So let's just go back one page. In row 1, column 1, I'm going to add up the admittances hooked up to this node. And that's going to be 1 over 10. And think of this as an impedance of 1 plus J2. And then the admittance is the reciprocal of that. So it'll be 1 over 1 plus J2. And what's between nodes 1 and 2 is going to go in row 1, column 2. It's going to be the reciprocal of the sum of these two. So in other words, a minus the quantity 1 over 1 plus J2. There's only one current source entering that node, and that's going to be 10.6 plus J0. Go to node 2 then, this would be row 2, column 2 in the matrix. Let's add up all the admittances at this node. So I've got this admittance here, which is 1 over 1 plus J2. And then I have the reciprocal of this, which is 1 over minus J5, and then 1 over 5. What's between nodes 2 and 1 would go on row 2, column 1. That's going to be, again, the same thing here, 1 over 1 plus J2, but negated. The current source is entering node 2 is just this current source here, which would be 20 divided by 5, or 4, times I sub x. Two node voltages then are V1 and V2. You can find this matrix on the next page in the middle. So here's my resulting writing equations by inspection. And what I've got here, I've got two unknowns, V1 and V2, and I have another unknown, I sub x. This was the controlling variable in our previous schematic. Now that was actually the current flowing in the 1 ohm resistor and the 10 millihenry inductor. As we did in ECE 201, let's write this current I sub x in terms of the node voltages, then we can bring it on the other side of the equation. And you can always do that because the node voltages are really the 
minimum set of unknowns we need to solve for any voltage or any current in our circuit. And that was true in the time domain. It's also true in the frequency domain. The current, I sub x, is going to be the current in the impedance 1 plus J2. On the left-hand side of that is V1. On the right-hand side is V2. And we'll divide by the impedance 1 plus J2. And then when we bring this on the other side of the equation, it's going to be a minus 4 I sub x. Let me multiply this by minus 4. I have V1 is minus 4, and then I have V2. Same thing, but the two minus signs cancel. Now let's bring this on the other side of the equation. It was in this particular row. So now it's going to have a 0 here as I bring this on the other side as a minus 4 I sub x, which is equal to this. Okay, so I'm going to take this and put that into this column over here. I have the same denominator with a minus 1 in the numerator. Here I've got a minus 4, so I get a minus 5. Put this term on this side of the equation, and it's going to add into the things that multiply V2. So I have this equation here, and now I'm going to add 4 over 1 plus J2. I have a 1 over 1 plus J2, so I'll get a 5 over 1 plus J2. And I have the 1 fifth, and then the minus J I could bring up into the numerator as a plus J. This is my matrix now describing the circuit on the previous page with just two node voltages, and now some entries I can need to solve for. Let's find a common denominator here before we do some more algebra. I'll multiply this by 10 and multiply this by 1 plus J2, so I have 10 plus J20. In the numerator here, I would just have 1 plus J2, and then I have 10 over here. Here, it's going to leave this alone. Likewise for this one. For this one, same thing. Let's find a common denominator here. It looks like 5 is common, and then 1 plus J2, so let's multiply 5 times that. So 5 plus J10. I'll do a little bit of algebra and clean this up. I've got 11 plus J2. Here, we've just got the same term. Here's the same term. Add this up now. I've got 25 plus 1 is 26. And I've got a j squared here times 2, so I get another minus sign with the 2, and I wind up getting 24. And then I have j2 here plus j1, so I get j3. So that's my matrix now with a still simpler entry for each of the rows and columns that I have here. Now I'm going to find the determinant. I'm going to solve for node voltage V1, which is our, in our frequency domain, the phasor voltage V1. You can use Kramer's rule to do this, so the denominator is the determinant of our Y matrix. In the numerator, I'm going to take this matrix and put the left-hand side of the equation in column 1 that's associated with V1. And now I'm going to multiply this out. So this times this minus 0. So 10.6 times this quantity. And then I've got this times this, which is this, then minus the product of these two. I've got two minus signs that cancel. I've got a third minus sign right over there. It's easier to do multiplication in polar form than rectangular form, so let's convert these to polar form. Again, this was 10.6 at angle 0, or just a scalar of 10.6, or 10.6 plus j0. But as you multiply this, let's put that 0 degrees just back here to remind ourselves that that is a magnitude and an angle. Punch this in our calculator, we'll get something a little bit bigger than 24. We'll be in the first quadrant, very close to 0 degrees, because this is a lot longer than this. Same thing here, we'll be in the first quadrant, a little bigger than 10, Angle a little bit more than 45 degrees because this is a little bit longer than this. At the end, if these were two were equal in length, we'd have an angle of 45 degrees. Do the same thing for the denominator. A little bigger than 11. Angle close to zero. Here it's 10.3. Same is true here. I've got something a little bit longer than 20. So 22.36. A little bit more than 45 degrees because 20 is bigger than 10. So that seems reasonable. Then we've got this term which we found before. And likewise this one. Then we've got 5 at angle zero. 1 plus J2. Uh, I'll be a little bit more than 2 a little more than 45 degrees. Of course, it's the same as this one, so we get the same result here. All right, now I'm going to multiply the magnitudes. Multiply this times this and divide by this. This is about 2, so we get 22.94. 0 plus 7.13 minus 63.43. Get a minus 56.3 degrees. Multiply these two, divide by these two. But you can see right here, I'm going to cancel this and this. So it's something a little bit bigger than 1. With the angles, so I'm going to add these two together. So I'll get uh, 10.3 plus 7.13, then minus 63.4 twice. I get a minus 109.37. This term times this, and then I've got this times this, which is, which is around 5, actually. So I get 1, and then 0 and 0, and then I've got this twice, so minus 126.86. Okay, I'm going to convert this into rectangular form. This is a minus 109 degrees. So I'm going to be in the third quadrant. It's going to give me a real and imaginary part that are negative. Likewise, for this term over here, real and imaginary parts that are negative. Okay, now I can add up the real and add up the imaginary. So adding those two together, I get a, there's a minus, a minus sign here, so I get a plus 0.24. I 
and then I've got this term which is negative and this term which is positive, but this is a little bit bigger than this term, so I get a minus j.22. Put this into polar form. That's going to be pretty close to 45 degrees. This is a little bit shorter than this, but we'll also be in the fourth quadrant, so a negative angle, a little bit more than 45 degrees because this is a little bit shorter than this, and then the length of this would be really large in either of these two, and 0.3256 seems reasonable. So then dividing these two, we get about 70.45. This angle minus this angle still have a negative 13.8. And lastly, to put it into the time domain, what I do is put the cosine of omega t between the magnitude and the angle. And this is a node voltage analysis example.